lily of the valley, sweet and pure, but it can cast a spell on you, that be sure. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on this channel we talk about perfumes and fragrances and I am smiling because my co-host, or actually should, should I say, Claude, Claude, oh he's going off now, the star of my show has just wandered off set. That's my Siamese cat. So if you've just clicked on me and you're, th and you're thinking to yourself, who is this woman? If I'm your kind of strawberries and pancake, then you know so what to do. today we're in the middle of May and I wanted to talk about a scent profile. And I've talked about these scents before. There's five couple more more than others and some not recently actually so they deserve some recognition may is the birth month for the flower of lily of the valley and also hawthorn i love that word hawthorn hawthorn i sound like miranda when i say that anyway lily of the valley it's a sweet tiny little bell-like floral that's favoured for purity, favoured for peace, favoured for prosperity, favoured for luck, whatever you think it will bring you. It's not for everybody's taste, Lily of the Valley. It's favoured in bridal bouquets as well, and a lot of royalty have had Lily of the Valley flowers in their bridal bouquets and it's quite popular for that with brides it's delicate it's dainty but in a couple of these perfumes that i'm going to talk about it can be quite fierce so the first one that i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about probably the cheaper end of the scale not the cheaper end the, the least inexpensive of the scale of perfumes and this is by Molinard, and this is called Muguet. Now, Muguet is the French word for lily of the valley. It smells beautiful. It, lily of the valley scent. These all have the prominent note of lily of the valley. I do have a few other scents that have it in, but this... This is the star. This is this is the leading man, the leading lady. I'm gonna. I did spray a little bit of this on my hand about 15, 20 minutes ago, and as it's dried down, it's got a little bit more powdery. I'd say it's it's probably the most delicate out of all of these scents, actually, I would say, maybe the most wearable, maybe the most work appropriate, although I think all of these are work appropriate. There, I said it. This, I mean, Molinard, made in grass in, southern in, in the south of France. It is perfume heritage. I need to wear this one more. I haven't really sprayed this one a lot. I've only sprayed like maybe a, a few mils out of it. Um, it doesn't have the best longevity, but it is a, it is that lily of the valley note that I love. So yes, Muguet Molinard. There's not really many other notes in this. I would say a few of these other scents do have more other notes in this, especially the next one I'm going to talk about. Now, the next one is probably going to be the most fresh and aquatic lily of the valley combined with cyclamen lotus um melon you know what i'm talking about it's a classic eau de toilette isimiyaki the original one this now on the other hand this if you do like if you don't like a fresh scent you will not like this the lily of the valley maybe is there, it, but it supports the other notes in there. 
it supports the other white florals in there and the um, aquatic florals. It has this cologne note in there that, not cologne as in eau de cologne, but this cologne note that is like a watery feel to it. Um, it's beautiful. It's one my husband, Richard, loves on me. It was a signature scent of a girl I used to work with, and she always smelled lovely. It was her signature. Mm, it, it almost starts out with the fruitiness a little bit, but then that dissipates, and the lily of the valley shines through with the aquatic floral notes. It's like a spring summer day. It is a summer scent, I would say this is. I would say this is, and I'm not a seasonal scent wearer, but this is. So if you love those 90s kind of scents like this, like Issey Miyake, which doesn't really get talked about now. I mean, it's 30 years old or more, then you'll love this. But I think, moving on, let's move on to the third one. I think we're going to go up in price probably now. So let's talk about the classic. Probably the most famous one, yes. Diorissimo by Dior. Current formulation, but I still love it. Now this to me, I have a fair mm. It's when I first, mm, when I first ever smelt this in the 90s, I had, and I still do, I get such a physical reaction from it. It's one of those, I have to close my eyes while talking about it. It's, it's really stunning. It's really beautiful. It's ethereal. It's, I'm going to spray a bit on me. It's, to me, it's like that fairy lily of the valley, the good fairy, the one that is comforting. This is such a comforting scent. This was created by Christian Dior in the 1950s, early 50s and or mid 50s, was it 1956? And it is, this current formulation just has lily of the valley, a little bit of jasmine and a little bit of white musk. But it's that lily of the valley that is prominent. The older formulations, and I do have a vintage formula, has more of that animalic facet to it. But this is full bottle worthy, is still full bottle worthy in the current formulation. It, I've had people, it, to me, I think it's so, it's such a, it's so sweet. I can't explain the words to it. It is peaceful. Christian Dior wanted to convey a scent of peace, a scent of luck, a scent of prosperity. And if this feels like it's bringing me prosperity within, I'm wearing it. Even though life may not be rich in other things, in here, I'm learning that life can be rich and this see it's it takes my breath away this is the kind of scent that takes my breath away oh i could i need to wear more of this actually i need to really go through my fragrance wardrobe and really go through those scents that really means so much. I've got goosebumps now talking about this. It's just, yeah, there we go. Masterpiece, Diorissimo by Dior. I'm going to move up in price-wise. I would have thought really maybe the last two probably are very, very expensive, very much more expensive. And 
The last one I'm going to talk about is actually probably super rare and hard to find. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Amouage. An Amouage scent gold. Now this has incense and it also has um, the animalic facets in there. But to me, the opening is Lily of the Valley. It's Lily of the Val Valley prominent. It's it's vintage. It's the first ever perfume that Amouage came out in in 1983. It's powdery Lily of the Valley. It's slightly austere Lily of the Valley. It's regal. It's majestic. It's... You want to stand up straight when you wear this and you want to command an audience and you want to convey a message. Amouage Gold, it, it's, it means business. It's both scent, but do you know what? It has a slight edginess about it. Forget the Chanel number no. fives, even forget the Yves Saint Laurent Reeve Gauches. Which, uh, you know, I love my Reeve Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. This, though, takes precedence over that bottle, spectacular, Swarovski crystal, spectacular. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial here. But, you know, it's just everything and more. It's gold. It's 18 carats. The last one, which is this most... It's super rare and hard to find, and it's not for everybody, and it's by Andy Tower, and it is Carillon pour un ange, Chariot for an Angel. Now, don't be misled by the name. This is, if you're thinking of Diorissimo Dior, that light, ethereal, fairy, but it still has good performance, it's that scent that envelops you this will envelop you but this is dark mysterious it's leather it's woods it's green it's mossy it's the most probably one of the most greenest scents i own it's the green stalks it's the sap it's the floral itself it's and it's it's here <laughs> i don't even have to spray this bottle and I've used quite a lot. This, if you thought Amouage Gold was austere, this is not for the faint of heart. This is, where could you wear this? Well, you could wear this in the comfort of your home, own home. You could wear this to scare people. This is a scent that might scare some people. It's, it's a chorus of angels. But they're the warriors. They're the warriors. It's, yeah, they're riding the chariots and they're fighting for justice. And they are not going to stop until somebody has paid the piper. <laughs> yes, it's that kind of scent. So if you love that kind of scent, Carillon pour un ange, mossy green, it envelops you. It could suffocate you if you wear it too much. But if you wear a little of it, it could show another personality, another side to you, another facet to you that you didn't have. So Andy Tower and Carillon pour un ange. So those were my one, two, three, four, five prominent Lily of the Valley scents for the month of May. And I will have to say... This year, May the 30th, actually, is the 20th anniversary of my grandmother's death. But she also died on her birthday on the 30th of May. So I think probably on her birthday, I will probably not the last scent, but I'll probably wear one of the other four scents. Which one should I wear for that for her birthday? She was the lady that kept the glue together. Strong matriarch. I could see her wearing Diorissimo by Dior, or I could even see her wearing Amouage Gold. So until then, until the next time, 
You've been watching another edition of The Crazy Always edition. remember, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's not okay for people to take advantage of your vulnerability, but to know, to show vulnerability is a strength and it's not necessarily a weakness. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. I'll leave you for now, my chickens. I look forward to it. Bye for now.